I've used a lot of different camera setups over the years. A lot of them have been small and compact and most of them have been pretty cheap because I am a cheapskate. So I thought it'd be fun to go through 10 setups under £500 that I've used and got some decent footage with and decent photographs with. Boring disclaimer for Amazon. All of the prices that I mention are things that I've bought in the past and the prices may not be the same now because prices are always subject to change. There we go. Number one, the Lumix GH2 with the Olympus 9-18 lens. I originally got the GH2 for an absolute bargain. I got it for around £180 with two Canon FD lenses and a passive adapter. So, bargain! And as you know, I love the 9-18mm lens, so these two together will create some great results. I used this setup in 2017 when I went to Sardinia and I loved the results. The GH2 absolutely blew me away to be honest. I wasn't expecting much but I did love it to bits. The Lumix G7 with Maker lenses, particularly the 28mm, I had a great day out with that combination. As you probably know, ad nauseum on this channel, because I never showed up about it when I get a bargain, I actually managed to buy the Lumix G7 from John Lewis in the UK off display. Some nasty scrot of a human stole the stock lens off it, so the body was left on display for ages with the sensor open. And so I told the manager and I was like, it's probably broke, you know. The sensor's been exposed. <laughs> I'll be willing to take it off your hands for 200 quid. And he actually said, yeah. Apparently once half of it's been robbed, they basically have to write it off anyway. So yeah, I got the G7 body only for 200 quid. Probably the bargain of the century, which adds into my personal list of cameras under 500 pounds that I can chat about now. <laughs> The Maker 28mm is super duper cheap, it's under £100 and very small, manual focus lens. I did a review of it which I'll pop up here, um, but the results with that camera and that lens are awesome and it came in well under the £500 range for me personally. The Pentax Q. Do any of you remember or own or know of the Pentax Q? The Pentax Q is my gateway drug into Micro Four Thirds. It is a small digital interchangeable lenses system, the smallest in the world. And I think it's a CMOS sensor, so it's even smaller than a Micro Four Thirds sensor. And it's tiny, it's adorable. I need to buy another one. Just for no other reason that I just think this is so adorable. Given how small and cute and cheap it is, you can get them on eBay for, you know, under 250 or something. Price is subject to change. <laughs> but yeah, if you are in the sort of market for a fun, tiny camera, um, the Pentax Q, you cannot go wrong with. Love it. The Lumix GX80 with the stock lens that comes with it, which you can buy well under 500 quid at the moment, from new, with no cheats, loopholes, or bargain hunting. And you, you know, I've, I've covered the capabilities of that camera quite in depth on this channel and my goodness, for the price, it's ridiculous what that camera is capable of doing. I've even started using it as like a C camera. <laughs> I can't call it a B camera because my B camera is my G7. Mixed together, you would have no idea that that is coming from such a cheap camera. Another combination which I adore is the Lumix G7 with the Olympus 9-18. I took this all around um, my little American road trip last year. Was it last year? 2017. Oh my goodness, all the years are blurring into one. Anyway, brilliant combination. Because I got the G7 so cheap, it is underneath my 500 quid budget. If you were to buy both of these things new, I don't think it would be, so this is totally a cheat. But hey, bargain hunter privileges. <laughs> I love the results that you can get with these two together. When that lens is on that camera it weighs nothing. It is plastic fantastic but it is just such a joy to take around if you're traveling. Number six, don't know if this is a cheat or not but my phone, everyone has a phone usually with a camera on. I've got some decent results with my Note 8, it's not the best camera in the world but 
you know, the best camera you have is often the one you have with you. And the fact that it is weather sealed is very handy. Sometimes, like recently when I was in Naples and stuff, when it was absolutely bucketing it down for a day, I left my camera at home. I did the same in Wales, actually. I left my camera at home because I didn't want to test the weather sealing and got some decent results just with my phone. Number seven. The Lumix GX80 body with some vintage Canon FD lenses and I'll even include the adapter as well, all under the budget. I went round Conway with my dad and got some awesome photographs with this setup. It's so small and so tactile because the vintage lenses are all sort of, you have to change the aperture ring yourself, you know, it's manual focus. Great, great walkabout camera setup and very, very affordable as well. Diving properly into the vintage ter territory, I have a 35mm Olympus OM-1 vintage film camera, which I got way under budget. So under budget. How much did I pay for it? About 80 quid with a lens, and I've got some other lenses for it now as well. And I took this to Florida, and also Canada, and also just around I went through a proper film camera phase and it's a great idea to go back to basics I think they look so beautiful it's a bit of camera heritage to have and they're always on my shelf at the back love them would you like me to do some film camera videos because I'd love to take it out again let me know in the comments below two things that I will add about the quality of these images um, I took the same roll of film through the electronic security at the airport twice when I went to Florida and then Canada back to back. Don't do that, it degrades the film. And two, I got them developed at Max Spielman, which is like a high street store chain in the UK. And really to get the good results you want to go to a professional proper place that will develop and take time and care getting your images the way you want them. Proper cheapskate time, <laughs> the Lumix GX80 with the 15mm Olympus body cap lens. The smallest setup I have in Micro Four Thirds by a mile, you can literally fit it straight into your pocket. And you know, the body cap lens is either a fantastic body cap or a very bad lens. <laughs> I'll pop the review up here, it's a little bit tongue in cheek. But I do think you can get decent images out of it. And because it's so small and compact, why not have it with you? The body cap lens I got, I believe, for 30 pounds. I was buying some Canon FD lenses at the time and I noticed it in the shop and he kind of just threw it in. I think basically he wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> but for 30 quid, you know, who's gonna turn down a lens for 30 quid? And number 10, using the GX80 again, the GX80 was a Mica 25mm f1.8. The lens itself is very cheap and very, very good. I did a dedicated review on Yonder. Uh, I took this set up to the Isle of Man and got some cracking photographs, actually. You, you wouldn't think these were taken in August because it did book it down for the entire duration of the holiday, basically. But the camera and lens sort of combination I thought worked very well. So you may have noticed that a lot of these suggestions are Lumix based and that's just because I have gravitated towards Lumix cameras because I've grown to be more of a hybrid photo video shooter than just dedicated photography. But you could interchange these camera bodies with some Olympus alternatives and still be under budget. The Olympus OMDEM10 <laughs> Why did I sound like a robot? <laughs> the Olympus EM10 Mark II has come down a lot in price and is a cracking camera, particularly for stills. Also, the EM10 Mark I is not something that you should disregard. It's a classic. So that one will be very, very affordable at the moment. And more recently, I really, really wanted to test one of these, hint, hint, Olympus, the PL8, the Olympus Pen PL8, the sexy, sexy camera. I think Olympus really do beautiful, beautiful cameras, much better than Lumix ever do. So if you want something cheaper and stylish that still does great photography, there's a lot of things in the Olympus lineup that you could look at. So thank you very much for watching. And what setups have you used that are under 500 quid? Let me know below.